Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. It's real Cheetos fried chicken right here. We about to pickle this chicken. We got the flavor to slip in. We got the tang and the bang. Making my phone insane. We got chicken thighs that I have already deboned. Nice and floppy. We got our spicy pickle juice. And one pickle. And to make this extra hot, Frank's Red Hot Buffalo Sauce. Give it a little stir. Now you can let this sit like overnight. I'm just gonna let it sit for like the next three to five hours. That should be enough. And then we'll fry these bad boys up. And I feel like I shouldn't need to say this, but put this in the fridge. Oh, and can you guys guess what our breading's gonna be? Hot Cheetos, y'all. All right, so our chicken has sat in its spicy pickle brine for a few hours. We have some just whisked up eggs right here. And of course, this is our wonderful Red Hot flaming Crunchy Cheetos. To get them crushed up, I just put them in a Ziploc bag, I shook it up, and I hit it with a rolling pin. A lot of times. We're gonna put our chicken straight into the Cheetos here, get a layer of the dust down, whatever sticks first. Then into the egg. Then back in here. Really working to get a nice coating and straight into an air fryer. I think we're gonna be able to fit two or three in the air fryer at a time. You don't wanna overpack them. Guys, I am so excited to show you this chicken. Uh, we're gonna make a sandwich out of it. It's gonna be what that KFC Cheeto sandwich should have been, but I. Like what in the world was that KFC? But that's why we had to go and do it right. And that's what we're gonna do right now. We got my favorite Martin's potato buns here. Delicious. Very simple way we're gonna dress this up. We just got some store-bought shredded red cabbage here. You just need like a light base and some crunch to go with this delectable chicken. Now we're gonna put Cupy mayo on that. We want a lot of rich creaminess in this. Ooh, now comes the chicken, guys. Just, can we slow it down for a minute, please? Just come on in here. Come in here with me. That's what I'm talking about. It's real Cheetos fried chicken right here. And our second big boy, oh my God. These are big and juicy and marinated and wonderful. I, I don't know what more you could ask for. <sighs> now that's a sand witch. Oh, kiss, yeah, baby. I love it. Actually, there might be one thing missing. Got it. You know I got it. Come on, guys. You know I got it. Cheese. Jesus. Jesus Christ. Let's. Oh. Okay. They're so big. They're hard to stand up. Let's just get into it. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take an unadulterated bite. That is so delicious, like, the three or four hours it was in the fridge and the pickle brine made a huge difference. You can taste it all the way through the meat. It's so juicy, it's so amazing. And did you hear that, like, bit that broke off hit the floor? It's so crunchy from the Cheeto, oh, the Cheeto breading. That's good, let's give it a dip. That is...
I'm going to heaven. Colonel Sanders, I will be patiently waiting by the phone expecting your call. Because you have been served. For those bad sandwiches you sold me. And an invitation to work together in the future. Mm. Cheetos get at me too. Yep. Mm. Honestly, guys, I was like feeling a little down earlier today, and this just turned my frown upside down. It made everything good. Oh, and some advice for air frying these, put a tiny bit of water in the bottom of your basket so it doesn't smoke that much. I had that problem. And like 325, 350 for um, like 30 minutes. Just watch out because the, um, the Cheeto breading will brown faster than a traditional fried chicken breading. That's why you gotta do it at a slightly lower temp for a longer amount of time. And of course your cook time and temperature will vary slightly based on the thickness of your chicken. Mm. But this seems perfectly cooked and moist and the brine kind of protects you from overcooking. What you're always looking for with chicken though, this is easy if you have a an insertable meat thermometer, 165 degrees. Safety zone. Mm. That is filling and messy and wonderful. We're gonna get some go juice. Get some of this go juice in us. Give daddy a little pick me up. Oh yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now this got me thinking like, what else can I bread some chicken with that would be really good? The, these hot Cheetos are amazing. I'm so glad I got the hot ones and not the regular. Like regular would have been fine, but the hot really makes it pop. Mmm, mmm, mmm. I mean Doritos, maybe. I'm not sure if that seasoning would work out. Takis are an option if you want to do kind of a south of the border fried chicken theme. That'd be fun. Mm -hmm. I remember, was it last season on, on like Top Chef? They had a guy who came in and the first thing he cooked to like get through the, the intro challenge was he did like an Indian fried chicken. It looks so good. And I've been meaning to try that. I need to look up that episode like on Hulu. And figure out like what spices you use. The thing I've never been clear about on like Top Chef and other competition shows is like if you're doing fried chicken. It's really best if you're not just starting with chicken straight out the package. Like you need to do a dryer or wet brine or something to really get some moisture and flavor in there. But there are time constraints to never provide them with that opportunity. Like it's always like cook this in an hour. Mm. 
which all my favorite recipes involve usually doing something and then waiting a day or at least six hours or something before the next step. At least with like this or like the Great British Bake Off, it's kind of a, oh no, we lost a little breading. It's kind of a necessity that they have time for things to proof and rise and stuff, so they have plenty of time there, but Top Chef never provides the amount of time that I think is acceptable to really develop flavors. Like, I guess that color is kind of some of the dishes they make. You're not seeing a lot of slow cooked things. Which also kind of limits them to a more Western elitist audience in a way, I think, uh, or Western elitist kind of food. Because foods that take longer to cook and use, you know, cheaper cuts of meat and cheaper ingredients that you de develop the flavor over a long time, that's traditionally the food of like poorer people and foods of like indigenous cultures that had limited access to ingredients and stuff before trade came along. And I think those are some of the best foods in the world. But, you know, you can't cook them in an hour. Okay, some of the breading was a little too thick and it's falling off, but that's okay. It's still delicious. So Top Chef, get at me. I have some cultural consulting to do from this boring white man. Wait, no, don't get at me. That would be a bad luck for everyone. Go talk to a food culture anthropologist. That's who you need to talk to, someone who studied. I ain't that. I just have some backseat driver thoughts. Okay, <laughs> I'm full. Oh, that's some juicy filling chicken. Not to mention the cheese sauce. Mm. Okay. Well, thank you guys for watching. You guys are all the best. If you're still watching right now, you're an amazing dedicated fan and I really appreciate you. If you're into my gaming stuff, go check out my new gaming channel, link down below. I'm gonna start doing all my gaming streams on there and like gaming compilation, compilation review videos and stuff. Because every time I did that on this channel, everybody who understandably is here for food is like, what are you doing, Sammy Boy, in Unsubbed? Which I completely understand. So it's getting its own space. But I like doing it, it's fun. Oh, and it's just gonna be called Nom Nom. That may be dumb, I don't know. But I may be dumb, I don't know. I do know, I am. Okay, thanks guys, I love you. Bye. Oh, so dirty.